Howdy, my name is Hafid and in this video I will show you how to create a realistic fireball in Cinema 4D using X particles and Cycles 4D. This video is dedicated to a fellow Cinema 4D artist, X particles and Houdini and he's a photographer from New York City, Kevin Lee. Go check out his account, he's got some really cool animations and he actually just told me that he sold one of his lungs to acquire a new NVIDIA RTX 3090. So Kevin, we expect and we look forward to a lot of new simulations coming from you okay first thing is to create a particle emitter over here I have a shortcut to create a whole XP system and we go to the default emitter this is what we get we don't need as many particles so I'm going to select the emitter go to emission and change the mode to shot and for now I'm just going to do one but obviously you can change this later I'm also going to change the radius to let's say 20 um, and then for the speed, I think I'm going to do 200. Next, I'm going to go to the display and just change the display mode to spheres just so we get a, a better visualization of what the sphere, what this um, ball is going to look like. So there we have it. And then from here, we're just going to go to extended data, go to physical data. Uh, we're going to turn the temperature for now, let's say to 100. Turn the fuel up, just one. Also the fire. And then we're just gonna add a uh, X particles tag, explosion effects source. And we're just gonna turn the curl to, let's say a hundred. If we play it again, nothing is gonna happen because we need a dynamics, explosion effects. And if we play it again, here you can see that automatically and as easy as that um, is going to be turning into fire now obviously we need to increase the bounds because as soon as it comes out um, it's going to lose that information so it's not going to turn it on fire but maybe that's the effect that you want to achieve uh, but for this tutorial i'm just going to go to the front view is it the front no the right view and just um, shape my explosion effects just so it kind of follows the path and it doesn't cut off so I'm just gonna make it a little bit shorter a bit longer uh, let me go back and just to save some space I'm trying to match it to the size of my emitter and let me play right there let me zoom out so we can see how far it goes uh, this is just gonna depend on your camera um, obviously just increases and make sure that it's always within this bound um, if not it's just going to cut it off another thing is like you want to make it actually a little bit taller just so you let that smoke um, just flow in that volume a little bit because uh, once you're in the simulation uh, you can see in a lot of simulations actually that like once it goes out of bounds it's just going to cut it and i don't know it just that's where you lose the effect so make it a little bit taller just so you just so you let that smoke dissipate a little bit um but yeah make it long enough and obviously tweak it depending on what you're going for and there you have it at this point we already have our fireball now it's a matter of like what effect do you want to give this fireball if this is just like i don't know a comet flying through space it's obviously just gonna keep going um straight but if you want to uh, do it how i did it at the beginning that it uh you know cra clashes on, on the ground and it bounces and we got to change a couple of settings so first thing i'm going to do is go to explosion effects simulation and over here on the buoyancy bu buoyancy uh this is the uh smoke how the smoke is going to react according to, to the gravity so i don't know much about uh fluid simulation fluid uh dynamics uh, i just know that decreasing the gravity is going to allow your smoke to like stay longer in the volume kind of like if there is no gravity at all like the lower it is the more uh, smoke is going to stay so for example let's play right now uh, smoke is going up but if i decrease the gravity let's say to something really short something really small like 40 play it again you're gonna see that the smoke is gonna stay a bit longer um according to the path of our of our fireball you can decrease that even more let's say to 20 and let's play it again and yeah it's staying a lot longer so this is another effect that you want to get from here like i said it depends what you're going for uh the other thing that we can tr quickly change is just going to the dissipation maybe you don't want your smoke to stay there as long so we're gonna go back show it again yeah i just wanted to start dissipating at this point so i don't want that longer trail so and smoke dissipation 
uh, here's where you're gonna change it. If you can tell, uh, when I go up in the parameters, it goes from zero to one. So it's not, it's, uh, you're gonna do small increments because it's gonna do a, a big change. If I go straight to one, it's immediately just gonna uh, leave the smoke. It's kind of trying right now, but it's not gonna leave it a long trail. If we go to, let's say, something really small like zero, like 0 0.01, um, I know that's really small, but like you're gonna be able to tell that it's gonna start to dissipate a bit, a bit more. Maybe something like 0 0.05, 0 0.05, let's see. Yeah, I like that better. Okay, now we're gonna make this fireball more like a projectile and we're gonna have to add some physics into it. So we, we're simply just gonna add a modifier, a motion modifier, and just add a XP gravity. Uh, just so it immediately pulls it down to the ground and maybe that's a little bit too much. Uh, maybe it will do gravity to like, let's divide that by 10, maybe 98. Yeah. Uh, you also might want to change your um, XP emitter. Just rotate it uh, on the X axis and I will give it like, I don't know, 45 degrees. I think that's something I stuck with me from uh, physics class. I think a 45 degree is going to give you like the longest um, distance uh, when, whenever it comes to projectiles. I don't know. It's been a while. But if we play that, you can see that now we're getting that curve obviously because the emitter is going up but it's coming down because of gravity um, and from here you can um, change that uh, like the length from a, a couple different ways um, you can increase if we go to the xp emitter you can either increase the speed of the emission let's say uh, we go to 400 obviously that's going to go faster give it more speed um, it probably go out of bounds but uh, maybe that's what you need uh, I, that's not what I need. So I'm just gonna leave it to 200 and yeah, that's a good path I wanted to extend all the way to the end of the explosion just to give it um, Just more shape. So I'm just gonna decrease the gravity I have <laughs> And let's see how far that goes it's gonna go Wait, I didn't decrease it by half Why do I two? There we go There we go go up it barely reaches the bounce and go down. Okay, I'm gonna stop it right there. Go to the side, make it a little bit longer. Move it to the right and actually make it taller just so I let that smoke uh, just move around. Just give your smoke some space, man. <laughs> um, just so you let it um, not being cut off by the bounce. Uh, here we go. Yeah, it's looking pretty cool. Um, I actually wanted to show, now I wanted to show more of the path. So I'm quickly, quickly gonna go to simulation, dissipation back to 0 0.033, let's see. Point zero 0.01, yeah, point zero 0.01. Small increments, small increments. Yeah, I just want a longer trail looking good looking good in order to see a little bit better um how this is actually going to turn off i'm going to go to explosion effects and just turn uh, on the display tag turn these slices to like 1024 also i don't want to see that sphere that was just to like visualize the size of it but now that we have fire we don't really need it so in the emitter display i'm just going to turn it to dots we don't need it to be um, sphere anymore so now we can actually visualize how um, it's going to look like on the render. And it's looking pretty good. I'm going to stop it at this point. And then we're just going to set up our scene um, and cycles for the. For that, I'm simply going to add uh, cycles for the softbox. Go to the right view and just put it on, on the top. Um, just so we can see our smoke. Make it long enough. Something like that go to the top mm. yeah that should be enough and that's pretty much all we need so let's open up cycles for the preview 
attached it here on the side. We can't see anything at the moment because we have to add a material to the explosion FX. Luckily, Cycles 4D already comes with materials. And over here in the material tab, you can just uh, open up the menu, just grab the explosion FX, and we're gonna use the um, EFX burn and smoke nature and we're just going to apply that to the explosion effects and you can automatically see that's going to show us our explosion now if you want a bit more detail uh, obviously you're going to go to the simulation and just decrease the size uh, of your voxels uh, I recommend to go for like a 0.7 um, I feel like a 0.7 is a good it's a good um, number. Anything below one is going to give you some pretty good detail. I actually haven't tried the abris, but I assume that um, this is going to be a less more work. So you can try that out. But uh, the important thing is to have this softbox at the top. And let's say I'll give it just give it some more strength, like 10. And this is just going to make your smoke more visible. Actually, let me zoom in so we can see it. There you have it. It's looking good. Uh, maybe if you don't want the actual fire to be too bright, just open up the material and go down here to the emission node and then just change the value number two instead of 60. Uh, I don't know, set it up to like 30. That's going to depend on you. There it is a bit less bright, maybe even to 15. Let's try that. Okay, that's looking a lot better. In order to get more detail again out of this uh, fireball, decrease the voxel size to like 0.7. Um, it is gonna take a little bit longer to load, but you are the, the cash king, so you have no problem doing this. And then on the XP emitter, uh, just increase the size of your particle radius, let's say to like 40. And let me pl play that simulation. I'm just gonna stop it right there because this is enough to show you my point. Uh, the lower the voxel size, the more information we're gonna get. And this is so much better. This is so different to what we had at the beginning. Uh, this is um, 0.7 and I think this is, this is a good number. Okay, the last thing I wanna show you is just how to quickly make it react to the floor. And you probably already know this. So we just wanted to clash with the ground and just bounce uh let's wait for it yeah just bounce instead of like just going um and disappearing so just create a plane um later you're gonna set it up to approximately the same distance of this uh put it inside of the explosion effects make sure not to go out of it and then just uh add a x particles collider tag just increase the bounce to like a hundred percent and you're immediately gonna be able to see that it interacts with the ground. Um, we're gonna wait for it. And it should bounce in three, two, one, zero. Boom, there we go. And it's just really cool how the smoke actually, it's pretty realistic. I believe that's what a fireball would look like. But yeah, that's how you quickly just make it react into the ground. And there you have it, Mr. Lee. Just play around with the emission, play around with the objects in your scene. Just add the collider tag for anything that you just want to interact with your fireballs. Uh, just some quickly uh, render uh, settings tips. Uh, this render it out as a PNG uh, with the alpha channel. If you want to put this as an overlay, let me pause this. Let me pause this. And then in cycles 4D for the final samples, I would say at least 10 samples. That's why I recommend. And also 12, 12 ray bounces on the light pads and the rate. One thing that I'm gonna look into is to see how to export this as a VDB. So you can just render it with Octane or Redshift. But also uh, I'm gonna find out how to make the, the fireballs more interactable with the objects in the scene, meaning that whenever they collide with something, they're gonna create, uh, you know, like particle, like colliding particles. So let me look into that and I'll create a more advanced uh, tutorial for that. But for now, I hope this was useful for anyone else watching this. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions or you can just message me on Instagram. My name is Hafid and I'll see you on the next video.